Greetings, everyone. Ed here, and welcome to Nutrition Made Simple. You know, I'm the older I get, have found that I don't think anything is pretty much random in my life anymore. There's a lesson to be learned in everything, whether it's labeled good or bad. Well, if most of you may know, I just had double hip replacement several weeks ago, doing extremely well uh, and thankful for that. But the three years of pain before that led me into a chase of how did this happen and why? And I went through a lot of different uh, scenarios and different reasons without much uh, answers to that question because the rest of my skeletal structure looks so young on the MRIs and on the x-rays. Well, something as often happens, you stumble upon a piece of evidence and then you pick it up and you run with it. That's what I did with the topic of oxalates. What are oxalates? Well, a book, the only one written in the whole United States at this time by Sally Norton is Toxic Superfoods. And it rang a bell with me. I remember a few years ago reading a little bit about it, but nothing came of it. Well, the lab here at Nutrition World, Marlene, she happened to get a blood test, a brand new one for oxalates. Well, I went in, had the test done because I wanted to see, and I was skyrocketing. So why does that matter? Oxalates are like little pieces of glass, and they can form themselves in any part of the body. And when they do, damage occurs. Pain happens. Destructiveness goes on within that because of the grinding of the glass. And there, it is pretty pervasive, but not everyone has an issue with this. But I'm always wondering why many of us who do the best of self-care end up having some crippling kind of pains for reasons we can't figure out. I'm honestly believing that oxalates were one of the bigger reasons for my hip dysfunction. So what are the symptoms? Uh, everything. It would depends on where the crystals go to. IBS, reflux, liver issues, acidosis, autoimmune, allergies, all the joint issues, and gout, teeth. teeth. Tartar on the back of your teeth is one of the number one symptoms. Always had that my whole life. Uh, gum problems, skin problems, styes in the eye, vertigo, vulvodynia, and excessive urination, bladder issues. And cloudy urine is one thing you can look at to see if you constantly have it. It could be one sign. Now, you know, what do we do about that? Here's the catch. Generally, it comes from healthy foods. And most of these foods were part of my diet for decades. Now, my diet has been altered because of this oxalate protocol that I am kind of putting together. And it's not that hard, people. I know it sounds at first like, oh, no, I'm going to have to miss this piece of food that I've been loving. It's just we can't be addicted to our taste buds. We have to be uh, connected to the wisdom of intuition and our life. So what are some of these foods? Spinach is number one that I was eating every other day. Nuts, can't do them. Always knew they did not agree with me, but I just kept being connected to the nutritional content thinking it's got to be healthy. It's got to be healthy. Well, it is healthy for some people and some it's not. Uh, chocolate. Chocolate's uh, going to be a no-no for many, many years most likely. Potatoes, beets, avocados, except in small amounts. Buckwheat, turmeric. Nutrition World's full of turmeric products, but here's the good thing. Curcumin, which is f made from turmeric, is okay, but turmeric is a whole plant in a capsule is not. It produces oxalate, the, again, the glassy components that will do damage. Chia seeds, navy beans. So there's a whole host of foods that I've had to eliminate, and actually, nutritionally, my heart was broken by these two different nutritional foods that I, at this point, can't do. Vitamin C, except in two to 400 milligrams. I was doing 2,000 for the last 50 years or more. And then lastly, my absolute love affair was with green drinks, with all of the green phytochemicals and detoxing and stuff that I knew would make me live a long time. And it might, but not if I'm hurting all the time. It doesn't matter. So I've had to eliminate vitamin C, turmeric, and my green drink. And I've just had to get mentally over that. Well, the thing is, you will know that you have oxalate issues if – you go on this protocol with these certain nutrients that help detoxify it because you're going to go into something called dumping. Dumping will happen between one week 
and five weeks of being on a low oxalate diet because you have to quit putting it in first. Secondly, we have to put things in your body that helps get rid of it or detox it. And when that plan puts in action, your dumping is going to make you feel worse before better. Whatever those symptoms are, they will be exacerbated by the dumping of the oxalates. So I recommend this book, Toxic Superfoods. I recommend you also to get an app called OxyPure, O-X-I-P-U-R. That lists the crystalline content of oxalates in almost all the foods that we commonly eat. So I can go to out to eat or something else, and that will help me to decide this was yes, this is no. Don't be too aggressive. I'm telling you, this could actually be dangerous if you start dumping too much. Going to a sauna and sweating can be helpful. Drinking pure enough water is extremely important. But taking these few nutrients are key. Calcium with every one of your meals because calcium binds with oxalates. So if you get some in the food, which you're going to, it's going to bind and keep it from going into the cell. And you have to do magnesium, not magnesium oxide. You have to do the forms that are absorbable because it has to do with the oxalates again. Eating healthy sodium. Oxalates come from a very acid condition within the body and also a condition of low glutathione, which is an ultimate antioxidant. Lemon juice. Lemon juice is tremendously medicinal for oxalates. In fact, I've always kind of talked about my little tequila drink that I drink. I have this business card with the recipe. It never causes me grief, never makes me feel bad, and it's always had uh, uh, tequila with lemon juice and water. That's been my recipe, shaken on the rocks. That's it. But the big nutrients are the calcium, B1, which you have to do 200 to 400, 200 to 400 milligrams a couple times a day, and then something called P5P, which is a special B6 of about 50 milligrams one to two times a day. Without those, you might stop the progression, but you're not going to get rid of them. So that protocol, plus an herb called Chanca Piedra the first month, will lessen the amount and get rid of some uh, of these oxalates. Again, if it gets too heavy, too painful, you have to back off because you're getting rid of too many. But the first goal is to eliminate the foods that are putting it back in. If you've had chronic symptoms, I don't care really what they are, and nothing has helped, you might want to think about the oxalate protocol. You can certainly go on YouTube. Uh, Sally Norton's got some a couple really good YouTubes on how to educate yourself more uh, about that. And we're going to post the actual protocol that I have used for the past uh, three months. Uh, it was too late for my hips. I think I'd had oxalates for far too long, and they had done too much damage. They can't repair it. I feel so much better because I think the reservoir of oxalates have been eliminated. And uh, it's just uh, uh, something that you're – Traditional people will not know probably in our lifetime because it's just now being talked about. In fact, one single book's been written on it. So take power within yourself to learn. I'm going to be here to help you along this journey as best I can with information. But look into it, experiment with it, and know that you can take control of your own health if you're a good detective and you surround your people or yourself with people who are, you know, experienced and also learning for themselves. So take care and go with less fear because we can heal ourselves. It can happen. I know it can. I've seen it too many times. Thank you very much. Thank you.